This gizmo here is a model of how a gas behaves. The gas molecules are represented by tiny little ball bearings. And when I switch on, the ball bearings move around. I can make them move fast or slow. You can see that the ball bearings bombard the piston. And as they do so, their momentum changes. They were moving upwards before they hit it. Afterwards, they're moving downwards. Momentum is a vector quantity, so their momentum must have changed. That implies that the piston is exerting a force on them. And so by Newton's third law, they must be exerting a force on the piston. And so, of course, they do. Otherwise, the piston wouldn't stay up. Of course, we can say more about the force on the piston. We think about the weight of the piston and the force exerted by the ball bearings. What can we say about them? Take a few seconds to think about it. We can say that the two forces are roughly equal because the piston is more or less stationary. So that means that the upwards force from the ball bearings must equal its weight. You can see that it's jiggling around a little bit because, of course, the force from the ball bearings is not constant because the collisions are discrete. The force varies from moment to moment and therefore the piston jiggles up and down. A sort of Brownian motion analogue. However, on average, they're the same. The average upwards force from the bombardment is equal to the weight of the piston. So we agreed that the force from the ball bearings on average is equal to the weight of the piston. What if we increase the speed of the ball bearings? Now, what's happened to the force? Has it increased? Has it decreased? Or has it stayed the same? Take a second to think about it. This always catches them out. The force is the same as it was before. You can tell this because the piston's weight is the same as it was before. And it's still holding steady. So once again, the force upwards and the force downwards must be on average equal. Let me turn it down again. So the speed of the ball bearings represents the temperature of the gas. And it may have been a surprise to you last time that when the temperature was increased and the piston was allowed to float up, the pressure remained constant. In this case, I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to place my finger here and then I'm going to turn the temperature up. What's happened to the pressure this time? Again, take a minute to think about it. In this case, the pressure has increased. And you can see this must be the case because I'm having to exert an extra force from my finger to stop the piston moving up. So the force pushing it up must be greater than the weight of the piston. This is analogous to the situation where we keep the volume of a gas constant and increase 
its temperature. Now the pressure does increase, that's the pressure law. But if I now allow the gas to expand, the volume increases and the pressure drops until we reach a situation where the pressure has returned to its original value. The force on the piston is once more equal to its weight. So if the piston is free to move, it's the volume that increases rather than the pressure. That is Charles's law.